I'm waiting on a lot of parts to come in from Amazon. Um, but what I've been able to pick up locally, I'll be able to do some stuff today. What I need to do is I need to make a keel board and it's actually not a keel board. Um, it's something on the back of the boat uh, that stops drift. And I want to make a retractable one so I can pull it up because when you're booking along at higher speeds, if you can call it that with a, an electric motor, um, it does create quite a bit of drag. This keel board is to stop the back end of the boat from drifting while you're uh, sh shallow trolling or, or trolling slowly um, moving through areas while you're fishing. I've had a couple of boats, um, and the boats have had electric motors mostly, and some have been in the back, some have been on the front and the back. So I know what this what this is. Um, so here's a rough boat, okay? And the one I've got is a little bit pudgy, so it's kind of like this. We'll call this the front end. When you have any motor that's pushing from the back of the boat, it doesn't steer the front. What it does is it steers the back and points the front. So if you're going this way and you want to turn, you turn the back end of the boat or the aft area, and then you go forward. If you want to turn the other way, you turn the aft end of the boat and you go forward. Now, if you have an electric motor that's on the front of a boat, like right here, um, you can pull it forward and that's fine, but you steer by turning the front end of the boat. And the back end kind of does what it wants to. So if you're turning this way, often the back end will drift in this direction. So then you have to overcompensate to go this way and it'll start drifting in this direction. So steering from the front of the boat isn't the best way of doing things. So a way to stop this is with a keel. Now this is best seen on a keel of a sailboat. Um, a sailboat is steered from the back because it has a rudder, but um, the propulsion is on the front. The sail is usually on the front of the boat. And because of that, when you turn the sail into the wind, either one side you know, to the right or the left, the boat will tend to want to swing in the opposite direction. And in order to stop that, it has a keel down through the middle. And what stops it is the water. Water is hard to push through. Um, if you've ever gone to the beach and, and waste high water and tried to run in it, you know exactly what I, I mean. It's like really hard to do. So it will resist turning if you have a flat keel that goes down into the water. It will turn some, but not much. Um, and if you use the rudder in the back and, and turn it just the right way, um, it'll keep the uh, sailboat tracking uh, in the right direction. We can do the same thing with a small boat like this. By putting a keel into the water, when you're pulling from the front, when you have a motor on the front and you're pulling from the front, the weight of that water will resist the boat trying to swing in the opposite direction. And it'll resist quite a bit, and it doesn't take that much of a keel to do it. Um, so uh, I'm going to be building one, and I need one that retracts um, so that um, it's not running um, in the water when I just want to go fast and I'm sitting in the back or, or, or even pulling from the front even. Um, and uh, I'm going to do that mostly with uh, plastics. Okay, so what we've got is a piece of PVC pipe and 
a piece of PVC board that has been kind of rounded out and it fits snugly inside of this. Now, the reason for this is because when I cut a slot to put this in, I'm gonna to wanna to put a couple of bolts through here. And if I don't put something solid inside of the pipe, it'll just squash the pipe. Good. This is slid in the slot all the way to the back of this pipe. And I put a bead of super glue along both sides. And then I sprayed it with accelerator so it dries right away. And that was just to hold everything in place. If I had drilled it and this had slipped out or anything, you know, that wouldn't have been good. I wanted it held in place. And then I drilled two holes, one here. And one now I don't have any bolts that are the right size, but I do have plenty of this quarter inch threaded rod and lock nuts to fit it. So. Now, these aren't stainless, but you know, in fresh water, you don't actually need stainless. This zinc plated stuff works pretty good, but the exposed end of this, of this threaded rod will be a problem. It'll turn, it'll turn dark. So, a drop of super glue spread on it, and then touched up with a little bit of fixative and that will seal it. It is sealed. Well, now it's time to take this drift dampener and find a way to mount it on the boat. What I've got is a piece of PVC board to put on the T-track. And I have these small cradles I've made for the pipe that I want to put in to give it some stability. And so that when I bolt it down, it won't squash because it has to stay round. What I'm going to do is I'm going to super glue these on here so that I can drill through them afterwards without them going crazy on me. Little activator will lock it down. So in the end, this is what I've come up with. I have a piece of PVC pipe that has four holes in it so it can go on the uh, T-track. And it has some cradles so that it sits flat without rocking. And it has some carriage bolts going through it. And then they're bolted through the bottom. Now, I didn't want to have to drill these big holes in here. I was hoping I could slide it in the end and drop a, um, a bolt through, but there was no way I was going to do it because it the bolt was too long. And even if I did, I don't have tweezers long enough to be able to do that. So this is what we ended up with. And this will go on here. And you'll see what comes of that in a moment.
So let me show you what I've got here. And I've been thinking about this a long time, but also when it comes down to reality, designing it on the fly. The goal is to have the drift dampener be able to swing up, but not be in the way while it's swung up and then swing down when I need it. So this is what, what I'm doing. I am going to put a cap on this end and it has a hole in it. And then I am going to put a T on this end and like that. And on this end is a little uh, connector piece with another cap with a hole on it. Now, so far, none of this has to be glued in. Um, maybe the cap. No, it doesn't have to be glued in. Then <clears throat> I've got this short four and a half piece of pipe here. That'll have to be glued in. And an elbow, which will also have to be glued in. And then uh, here is the rudder. And that will go under here and also have to be glued in. Now, I have this threaded rod with this lock nut on the end of it and a washer, and I'm going to slide it into this hole. Comes out on this end, and then I have a small washer and my threaded knob. And this is a point of interest. It's got steel threads in there. It's not just plastic. Just the knob part is plastic. Now, what I'll have to do is put a little grease in here, probably put a little Vaseline on this joint right here. Um, here is the rudder down and out of the way. And I can tighten this knob that pulls all this together and keeps it from moving. So the rudder's down here. And let me show you the rudder. Down there. The top of it is about two inches above the bottom of the boat. If I loosen this knob, I can swing the rudder up and lock it in whatever position I want to. And I've got to super glue this nut onto here so that it doesn't spin on the end. But I'm not going to do that until I assemble this thing. So you can tighten this up as much as you want. This is what it looks like from the side. And from the back. Now, this rudder will be just at or above waterline. I don't think this, I mean, the waterline is probably right down here. I'm not sure yet. But when... I decide to go up front and use the motor, and I'm, I'm worried about the back end sort of drifting to the side. I can lo loosen this knob, bring this like this. Now, the reason I have this angle and like this, instead of just the T going straight down, is because if the T was straight down, when I flipped it up, it would be up here. And that would be okay. You know, it would be even with this, but I would much rather have it below that level. So the only thing that I have up at this level is this pipe and this short piece right here. So with a little luck, that will work. But <laughs> I have to make it so it's removable because well, it is, it's always removable. Take this nut off, pull it out because... I do have to get this boat out of here, and I can't have this stuff dragging on the side because I've got to tip it up to take it down the stairs. Now, I'm planning on doing pretty much the same thing 
on the other side. Um, but that is for the transducer for the fish finder. With the other side, the transducer, I did basically the same thing, but I threaded the wire from the transducer through the pipe, pulled it tight. I used the same principle of the threaded rod going through the pipe with a washer and knob on the other side. The transducer is connected by a two inch to one inch reduced T with stainless steel band clamps. This one retracts to the back because it doesn't have to be at the end of the boat like the drift dampener. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to be notified of the next and other upcoming episodes. I'll be seeing you in the next installment of this build of the Pelican Bass Raider. Thank you.